Don't Worry Darling, out in theaters, new thriller from director Olivia Wilde, starring Florence Pugh, Harry Styles, Olivia Wilde herself, Chris Pine, Gemma Chan and Nick Kroll. Uh, the film released amidst quite a lot of drama uh, originating in its production. First, Shia LaBeouf was fired from the film early on and replaced by Harry Styles. At the time, it was presented as him being troublesome on set, but when Wilde inexplicably recently started talking about the event again, um, again, for no apparent reason other than publicity, uh, Shia actually chimed in and brought receipts. Uh, a video was leaked showing Wilde asking him to reconsider coming back, uh, so it's debatable whether he was actually fired or not. Then Olivia Wilde had an affair on set with Harry Styles, which brought an end to her marriage with Jason Sudeikis, and the divorce papers were served to her on stage of one of the film festivals where she was presenting the movie. And finally, Florence Pugh refused to do any publicity for the film. Uh, apparently she learned that Harry Styles got paid a lot more money than she did, despite the much smaller role, which you have to admit is pretty damn shady when he's sleeping with the director at the same time. So, anyway, the film finally came out. Some people say that the drama was twice as exciting as the movie itself, others defend the film. I personally thought it was decent but flawed. The story opens with pictures straight from a mid-century American utopia. A small town in the middle of the desert, everyone lives in nice big houses, every morning for the men starts exactly the same with a freshly made cup of coffee and breakfast, after which they hop into their beautiful cars and drive off to the mysterious Victory Project headquarters to do their work, whatever it might be. Meanwhile, their wives are left home to happily clean, do laundry, cook, go shopping and gossip with one another about mundane stuff. The whole thing is run by a charismatic leader named Frank, played by Chris Pine, who right from the get-go gives off a vibe of a very suspicious cult leader and was apparently inspired by um, the, the character of Jordan Peterson. One day, one of the ladies starts asking uncomfortable questions at a party, causing a stir. She, she asks, why are we here? What is this place? What is actually going on in the Victory Project? Nobody takes her seriously, apart from Florence Pugh's character, Alice, who begins experiencing strange visions, dreams, premonitions, and those lead her to finally take initiative and begin questioning things and, and try to find out what exactly is going on in this creepy little town. So, the film, according to Olivia Wilde, has been inspired quite heavily by The Truman Show and Inception, both of which uh, I can definitely see in here. Uh, I would also say it feels spiritually similar to uh, an episode of Black Mirror, and towards the end I also thought of the um, Jordan Peele movie Us. Not because of similarities of the plot, but rather because both films are based on a very specific concept, and that concept, in turn, is so focused on the underlying meaning, on the themes of it, on the metaphor, that it doesn't exactly pay attention to the literal layer, and that layer falls apart a little bit towards the end. Uh, or to put it other ways, it's a great film to watch, but the more you start picking it apart, the less sense it makes. Now, I won't spoil any details, but there's a twist at some point, and I predicted very early on what it would be, but I, I was slightly wrong about its nature. I thought it would be more grounded and physical, so to speak, whereas the film went a bit more wild with the premise. And that, I think, creates some pretty significant plot holes, if you think about it. Um, there are also some other faults as well. Uh, there are things that feel out of place or end up going nowhere, like the final appearance of Gemma Chan's character, or the ballerina visions, or the imagery of planes, which is done twice and feels like a setup for something, only to never return again. Uh, the final chase sequence is pretty ridiculous and feels completely out of place in an otherwise subdued movie. There's also the problem of Harry Styles, who is clearly not a good actor at all, and that is not to say that he is actively awful, but rather just doesn't do anything. <laughs> he, um, you know, it's very apparent when he's surrounded by so many talented and expressive actors, he just stands out in a bad way, like a mannequin. Uh, there's one scene, especially, a tense conversation between him and Florence Pugh, and, you know, her part of the screen is just alive with the emotions, whereas his half is dead. You could make her act opposite a wooden chair and it would have been exactly the same. Uh, having said that, though, the movie does also have a lot to like. The mid-century production design, the 
clothes, houses, cars, furniture, props. That's all simply excellent. The cinematography and the unsettling atmosphere it creates are very good as well. I like the use of music which cleverly combines classic 1950s tunes with more modern stuff to, to really great effect. And all the performances outside of Harry Styles are great, particularly Pew, who is once again doing a very similar thing to Midsommar, which is being freaked the fuck out about the situation that she's in. Uh, and of course Chris Pine, who manages to do a lot with very little screen time, definitely feels like this larger-than-life looming presence. Uh, oh, and also I liked the way uh, Olivia Wilde's character is written. Uh, the revelation about her serves as a fantastic counterpoint to the otherwise pretty straightforward themes, which are, you know, critique of to toxic masculinity, uh, the need for control, abusive relationships, and the uh, sort of female struggle for freedom. Uh, all in all, I don't think it's nearly as bad as some reviewers paint it to be. Uh, in fact, it's not bad at all. It's just that it isn't great either. It's it's just decent. Um, I had a good time in the theater, and I'm willing to accept some of the plot holes in the in the literal mechanics of the film, because the thematic layer works well enough.